Hello, this is Josh Patel, and today I am bringing you another biology video. Today we will be doing Chapter 2, Chemistry of Life, Lesson 4, Chemical Reactions. As you can see, our key concept for today is, life depends on chemical reactions. This chapter is talking about all about how chemistry affects life, as all the key concepts were, life is dependent on the life. Bonds break and form during chemical reactions, as we all know. Chemical reactions change a substance into different ones by breaking and forming chemical bonds. So it's basically saying chemical reaction forms and, forms and breaks bonds to form other things. So reactants are what you start with and they are changed during the chemical reaction. And products are made by a chemical reaction. So reactants are what you start with, products are what you end with. So the reactants of this are Na and Cl, and they form in the chemical reaction, which is this arrow into NaCl, which is the product. So reactant plus reactant equals product or sorry, the arrow means yields, so it's not equals. So bond energy is the amount of energy that breaks a bond. The energy is added to break a bond. So if you wanna break anything, whatever it, is, whatever it is, it doesn't matter, but you have to add energy into it. So you have to add energy into it to break a bond. Energy is released when bonds form, which doesn't really make that much sense, but you just know it's the opposite of to break bonds. A reaction is at equilibrium when reactants and products form at the same rate. So if we look at this reactant, if CO2 plus H2O yields H2CO3 the same rate as H2CO3 yields H2O plus CO2. This is at equilibrium, but if CO2 plus H2O yields H2CO3 faster, then it can do it backwards, then it won't be at equilibrium. So carbonic acid acts as a buffer in your blood, keeps pH from changing drastically. That's just saying what this product is, which we don't need to know. Chemical reactions release or absorb energy, so they do one or the other. There's two types. Activation energy is the amount of energy that's needed to be absorbed to start a chemical reaction. So if this is our reaction, we need to absorb a certain amount of energy, which is our activation energy, and it's also energy in to start the reaction. So we have to absorb a certain amount of energy to start this reaction. If we only absorb up to like where my arrow is right here, it'll just fall back down and we'll be left with the reactants. We won't end, but we have to get all the way to the top and then our reaction will start. So it's like rolling a ball up a hill. If we only roll it halfway up, it'll just fall back down. But if we roll it all the way up to the top of the hill, it'll continue and roll back down and finish the reaction. So exothermic reactions release more energy than they absorb. So exo is out, or you can think of exit, which is also out. The reaction has a higher bond energy than the products. Excess energy is released by the reaction. So this is our reactants, reactants. this is our bond energy, and then our products are down here. So the reactants have higher bond energy than products. So this is our activation energy again, so we have to reach this amount of energy to finish the reaction. So as we go, we get our activation energy and then we release more energy than we started with, so we have excess. So as you can see, this arrow, the total energy released is longer than the energy needed. So the difference in energy is released. So that's why it's exothermic. It releases more energy than it absorbs. Also, exothermic reactions feel hot. So anything that has heat or releases heat into the environment or basically feels hot 
that's an exothermic reaction. Endothermic reactions absorb more energy than they release. These feel cold because it's absorbing energy from the environment. So endo is the opposite of exo, so it's absorbing. Reactants have lower bond energies than products, and energy is absorbed by the reaction to make up the difference. So reactants have more bond energy than, I mean, have lower bond energies than the products do. See, as the products are higher up. So the total energy added, this is the activation energy again. So we absorb the activation energy and then we, rele we release less than what it took. So that means it had to absorb some in from into the reaction. So it absorbs more energy than it releases. As you can see, that's why this is higher than the reactants. As again, these reactants feel cold, which is the opposite of exo. So exo ab releases more, endo absorbs more. So this is the end of our lesson on chapter 2, chemistry of life, lesson 4, chemical reactions. Hope you enjoyed the video and learned a lot. If you miss anything or need a review, make sure you go back and look at it one more time. And our next video will be on Chapter 2, Chemistry of Life, Lesson 5, which is all about en enzymes, which relate to chemical reaction. So make sure you watch the next video, and good luck in your quest in biology.